today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we're looking at a pedal from one of our favorite pedal manufacturers. Yes, sir. And it is a new version of one of his original pedals. One of your original experiences <coughs> with him. Yeah, so... This is like super fun episode, I think, for me. Um, <laughs> Involves you getting in the car, <laughs> right? And then super fun episode. Like, there's some history with it because we have had. So we're talking about Barber Electronics. We're talking about David Barber. We've had the opportunity to meet him uh, through our interview series. He actually came he down here. Right. We stuck him in the middle. Um, <laughs> he sat like this the whole time. Like <laughs> <laughs> that was pre pre COVID too, and he was still like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we had him. Come over, and he was nice enough to come and join yeah. us one night. He yeah. jumped in on our 19 conversation mm-hmm. series uh, a bunch of times. Um, the other night, I sent him a text because I think the version of Force has been out, but then there was like the whole enclosure issues with right. the COVID and things like that. So right. he was kind of out of production for a little bit, got some new boxes in. So we're here to tell you, first of all, David Barber's back in production, right, so right. I know he's doing direct drives. I know he's doing game changers. Uh, I think some boxes for the tone press are coming, and I think that's all I'm allowed to tell you about. <laughs> Maybe a couple surprises or a surprise. Maybe I don't know. So yeah, sent him a text said, "Hey, look, we're recording Monday night. What are the chances of us getting our hands on one of the new direct drives?" And drove down to his place this time. Sat on the front porch because of COVID. You know, we didn't want to get too close. And we talked for quite a while. It was great to catch up with him. He gave me some ideas about the direct drive. And off I went. And so we have, and there, there's no secret here. <laughs> I would say the most, the piece of gear that has made it onto this channel the most uh-huh. out of the guitars, amps, and pedals that we've used would be the Barber Electronic Direct Drive. Uh-huh. First appearance, episode one. Of right. PJ and the Beer. Right, right. That's true. Right. Yeah, so, right. in fact, the bumper, we were joking about this a second ago, the bumper was played on a version one direct drive. So, that little riff in the bumper mm-hmm. is a version one direct drive. Um, the, one, the only one that's not here. Right. The only one that's Because it's here. on the main board that he uses all the time. <laughs> right. And. This started, I, I mean, people, you talk too much tough. The, I think Have the you met David Barber? <laughs> We're talking about the guy who talks a lot, so right. we can talk. We love it. Mm-hmm. Um, this started with a Guitar Player Magazine mm. article. I think it was a, 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 I'm not sure if it was a review or a word, whatever, but they gave a lot of props to this. Uh, it was on Music Toys at the time, hand-built, hand-wired. I think at that time he was selling them for like $99.00. I drove his his house was in Maryland at the time. His shop was in Maryland at the top time. His shop, which I think was in the basement of his house at that time, um, drove to his shop, bought that original pedal. That's the story on my board ever since. Many things have tried to kick it off, right? And all of they, them temporary at best. Temporary at best. In fact, I think I bought a full tone OCD. Thought, wow, this thing sounds great. Went home, compared it in the basement. I'm like, wow, this thing sounds great, Barber. Put it in the the gig box. Good thing. Went to the went to the gig, played one song, or ripped it off the board, put the bar back on. And that was the end of the full tone. So, um, let's get in the pedal. Yeah. So we have a version for direct drive difference. There's some differences in it, but what we have basically is a volume of tone and a gain, and then you have two toggle switches on the left side. Excuse me. On the right side, on this side in the picture is your gain. Mm -hmm. So if you're all the way to the left, you're on the high gain. If you're all the way to the right, you're on the low gain. In the middle is kind of the tribute to the four input Marshall amps Mm -hmm. where you jumper inputs. Mm -hmm. So whatever that means. Right. Right. (laughs) And then patch cable in the front. (laughs) Over on the other side, we have EQ. And if it's in the middle, that's like pulling the tone pot up on the old one. Right. In fact, I think, because I should have checked this before we started. Actually has, look at that, literature. Right. I have the box. 
<laughs> That's one of the things <laughs> David and I talked about the other night was the GHN show stingers and stuff. Uh, I just want to make sure I get this right. So, fast forward. The, the ultra dynamic mode is getting very is getting very early four input vintage amp sound, really raw, raw looser, thicker lows, and an open but sweet top when combined with the neutral mids settings in the mid range switch. Mm-hmm. So if we go over to the mid range switch, all right, the switch can take you from fat squawky lead sounds to modern alternative sounds. Left pres- position all the way left is neutral. Middle is full and fat, and right um, is clear with strong fundamentals. So, and you had it in the middle. I had it in the middle and the high gain on the high gain. So I think what we're gonna do, um, it's on. You're live. Okay. So I think what we should do is maybe run. Let's leave it in the middle because that's my favorite spot. Leave it in the middle of the EQ for now. Okay. Let's run low, high, and then the four input. And I'm going to play mostly with the gain knob, but maybe tweak the volume knob if we need to a little bit. And then once we do that, we'll talk about the mids, I guess. Uh, Revolta Mandata 8. Revolta. Uh, through a Tyler JT22 in the opening clip, I was playing this clean through the Classic 30, but now I'm through the magic of the Tyler. Uh, reference tone. Um... All three pickups, because you can. All right. And All if right. you think we need to stop and tweak a tone knob or something, let me know. But All right. we'll start. We'll start at the low gain, kind of real low. Gain, and then okay. we'll put the volume at noon because mm-hmm. we we heard that Mr. Barber likes the volume, <laughs> all the knobs at noon. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Four knob yet, right? Um, 
That's good. <laughs> I'm sorry. It does sound good. It does sound really good. Um, when I was talking with him, I asked him, okay, so if I want to run this like my original, mm-hmm. because, I mean, I've loved the tone of that for nearly 20 years, if I want to be able to keep that kind of in the same place, high gain with that middle EQ... He asked me, where do you run the gain on your original? I said, probably about 1 to 2 o'clock. And he's like, yeah, you probably want the high gain because that's... You were saying on the low gain, that's pretty much maxed out. Pretty much maxed at the low gain. Yeah. So, um, should we switch it? Mm-hmm. So, I'm a little... It said especially the flat EQ. We'll come back to the EQ, but I'm going to switch it to the flat side. All right. Push the volume a little bit. We'll start with this down. great sound uh, it, it 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 almost makes me want to drop to a drop d but not in a metal kind of way kind of a swampy way or if i were a slide player such as yourself or our dear friend brody i think that would sound great with a slide that's from a non-slide it's, player, hu- but that, it's huge it is it's big and it's kind of raw a little bit and and it almost, sounds like a pushed amp i don't know if it's supposed to sound like that but almost kind of like a fuzzy undertone mm-hmm. even at times that's what I was thinking, that swampy, slidey, right. you know, drop D. And that's a 112, 22 watt amp, right, right, right. that we're pushing. Right. And so lots of low end on that setting, if I'm remembering what David told me, right? Mm-hmm. Lots of low end. Um, which that setting's really cool. <laughs> yes, I know. How many do you want to buy and set them all different? Right. Well, I wanted to, I'm like, I kind of want... To have multiples. One in every color. <laughs> because there was a blue one too, you said, right? But now, uh, I don't know. All right. Maybe more on a board. <laughs> so, could we, should we, maybe go back to the high gain setting, keep the volume up, gain back just a little bit, and then run the, the EQ, just so everything stays the same on the pedal, but then run the EQ. So, we'll go from flat all the way to the right, and then to the really pushed right. mids. All right. wants to go it's great (laughs) right so that was neutral clear with strong fundamentals full and fat talking about the mitts it's almost like he knows what he's doing (laughs) (laughs) well and you know that's the thing i mean that that is the thing he's a mastermind, but he's very like attention to detail, like right. down to what graphics, what knobs. One of the reasons mm-hmm. it was so hard to get enclosures is because he couldn't get people to print them the way he wanted them printed. Right. You know, so he's not willing to just be like, well, okay, I can save two bucks on the printing. He still wants them to look the way he wants them to look. Right. Plus still building them by hand. Mm-hmm. And we talked about like the different methods of solder that you can use that like the ovens and the wave soldering and stuff, but he's still doing them by hand. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, in his shop, by hand in his shop, buys the enclosures, has them printed. He's not doing that. 
himself anymore, but he is still circuit boards and all that by him. And what was I going to say on top of that? It, I, it just, he tweaks, man. He, yeah. It has to sound perfect to him. So, it is why he's a legend. Yeah. Don't tell me he said that, but yeah, that's right. <laughs> He'll never talk to us again. That's why he's a legend. <laughs> so, where would you land? So, why don't we figure out where you would land on it and then we'll play it. And it's not really, you know, we just wanted to give you a hint of everything it can they can do. Yeah, it's almost uh, hard for me to answer. I mean, because here's what I want to say, and we don't want to make this video an hour long. Jason played that pedal on Sunday morning. We talk about we play together on Sunday. And there was something in the tone, but something in Jason's approach to playing on Sunday that I personally believe was inspired by that pedal, personally. And I kind of felt the same way. No matter where you turn, wh wherever you set that, I tried to play something that I thought worked with that. So it's very hard for me to say, where would you land with that pedal? I don't know. I mean, right. here in the basement, it'd be like big and as full as I can get it. But like, there wasn't anything other than when you had the gain all the way back and it was just basically barely a, a boost of, of the pickups. I loved everything else. I don't know. That was a very long answer to where do you want it? I don't know. Like I, I Well, in Sunday, I mean, literally, it came out of the box for the first time. <laughs> I did the settings. I did the full fat. Right high gain and kind of made the knobs look like I would use them on the other one. Right. And off we went. I mean, literally plugged it in, mm -hmm. had about 30 seconds to kind of twiddle with it. We had a little tiny jam yeah, to get to play, play with it. And I was like, oh, that's good. And right. off we went. And right. it, it was inspiring that day. There's There was a, it's not different from the old one. It reminds me of the old one, but there was something. Some subtle differences. I'm yeah, not I'd... sure if it was something in the top end, the note characteristics, the attack. But whatever it was, it was better. Felt good. Yeah, and I don't know if it's the uh, having it in the high gain and just having a little bit more umph to it, even when you know you have it set. set and there. so next time know. we talk to know. next time we talk to David, we'll have to ask him because on the old one, you had a push pull pot for the tone pot, right? And that did your fat harmonics. But I think something else when you turn that, you were not only turning the tone, you were turning the fat harmonics as opposed to now the tone separate from that. And yeah. it could be that separation mm -hmm. that lets you dial it in a little bit better or something like that. But yeah. sounds great. <laughs> so I don't know. Playing out, I mean, are, are we, where you? I guess, let me just. Perfect. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's very singy. So we'll go with that. <laughs> um, so with that, I mean, at this point, yeah. we always like stop Thank you, everybody that's watching. Thank you for subscribing, clicking the notification bell, hitting the like button, leaving comments down below. Um, you know, here's here's something we often will say, you know, in the comments, this might be good, but let's change this up a little bit because, you know, David Barber from Barber Electronics will probably see the video. <laughs> so if you have a question for him, yeah, leave right. him a question below. Yeah. If you have a question that you'd like us to ask him because – when we get kind of through the COVID thing, I know that we're going to be getting together with him again. Yep. Um, hopefully, maybe going down to the shop or something. So if there's something that you would like to ask him, put it in the comments as well. And we'll do our best to make sure that that gets answered for you. Uh, not something that we would offer very often, but I think we can do it on this occasion. I agree. So with that. I'm PJ on behalf of The Beard. Reminding you, no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. There's three barbers there, but we're going to go with the, the, the new direct drive. <laughs>